Hi everyone, welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name is Stacy. I am the Palladian Awakener. So today let's talk about Jupiter moving into the sign of Gemini and how this shift in energy may impact all of us in at least one area of life over the next year. So this energy is starting the month of May and it's taking us all the way until June of 2025. Now, before I dive into each and every sign, I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you who are liking my content, sharing my content, have sub subscribed to my content and my channel. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for sending the love. I send it back to you tenfold. And if you're new here, welcome. Thank you for checking me out. And if you enjoy my content and like how I present my content, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. And if you feel called to do so, you can also share out my content as well. And also thank you so much for sharing your stories and your experiences as well. It not only helps me in my practice, but I mean, it obviously helps other people as well when you share your stories and experiences as well with, um, you know, to, with regards to all these planets in the sky, not, you know, Jupiter obviously is a great benefic, but I mean, um, you know, life is not all sunshine and roses, as I'm sure you all know by now, if you uh, are tapping into or diving into the metaphysical world. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, I just want to take this opportunity to thank you so much for supporting me and I appreciate each and every one of you. Okay. So just a couple highlights here, uh, just a couple notes is these are general, general, general readings. Um, so take what resonates, leave the rest. I do use a whole sign house system. I use Western tropical astrology. So I don't expect this to resonate with each and every one of you uh, because everyone's natal charts are different and it depends on what house system you prefer. And there's lots of different types of house systems out there as well and astrology systems for that matter too. So as I mentioned, take what resonates and leave the rest. I do recommend watching for your ascendant sign. I think that would resonate the most, but you can certainly watch for your sun sign as well and any other planet that you want to, to pull all this information collectively together for you to paint you, you know, a more holistic picture of what this transit through Jupiter, through uh, Gemini might play out in your life personally. And of course, if you'd like a personal reading tailored to you, for you, all about you, you can get in touch with me on my website and I'll be sure to put the link to that in the description box below. So I just wanted to start, it, uh, start off with a couple highlights about Jupiter and specifically this transit. So um, who is Jupiter or what does Jupiter represent? So wherever Jupiter is in your chart. Now, if you don't know your chart, just bear with me. Like I said, I'm going to hop into all 12 signs here pretty quick. Um, but look to where Jupiter is in your personal birth chart. Look at the house where he's sitting and also the sign where he's sitting. That is where you are naturally lucky and you're naturally blessed in your chart. Uh, this is also where you, um, you naturally expand or you, you feel most free or expanded in some way, shape or form. Now, again, other layers here are going to be, you know, if, Ju if your natal Jupiter is conjunct any other planets, points or placements in your chart, of course. Now, Jupiter uh, does represent luck, growth expansion, faith, exploration, possibilities, optimism, abundance. And I mean, the list goes on and on and on, but I want to try to keep this uh, short, sweet to the point. So keep all that in mind while we are talking about Jupiter. So Jupiter takes about one year to go through each and every zodiac sign. So he takes about 12 years to go around the entire zodiac. Now, if you have any personal planets points uh in gemini it doesn't matter if you're a gemini or not sometimes some of us have planets in this sign right so jupiter will conjunct them possibly up to three times because he will go retrograde at some point and i certainly will talk about this in my monthly astrology videos um but they'll be infused with this expansive optimistic energy but also keep in mind yes jupiter is the great benefic okay he's the great benefic he's a very beneficial positive planet however he will expand anything he touches so for the good 
the bad, the ugly, the sweet, you name it, Jupiter is going to expand that, okay? So just keep that in mind. Uh, okay, so just a couple uh, additional tips about Jupiter in Gemini here. So think back to June of 2012 to June of 2013. And then before that, June of 2000 to July 2001. If you want to keep going backwards 12 years, that's that'll give you an idea roughly of when Jupiter last transited Gemini. Reason why I say that, I always look back in history. I think most astrologers look back in history to kind of see, okay, what sort of themes can we expect with Jupiter transiting Gemini, not only as a collective, but personally as well. So I want to I wanna caution you here, though. Um, if something bad happened to you, say, between 2012 and 2013, don't think that that exact same thing is going to happen, okay? Again, Jupiter is a benefic. We're not talking about, you know, Pluto or Saturn or Mars here, but, you know, back then there could have been a lot of other planets or placements or something hitting your chart in a more personal way. So um, don't concentrate on the bad is kind of what I'm getting at. Focus on just the overall highlighted themes of what was happening in your life. You know, did you graduate from high school? Did you graduate from college? Did you like life themes like that um, is sort of what I'm talking about here. Plus, it's always kind of cool to think back 12 years. OK, what what was happening in my life at that time? Now, to add in another layer here. Jupiter rules Sagittarius and Pisces. So it doesn't matter wherever Jupiter goes in the Zodiac. He's always going to express these themes and energies. And why is that? It's because he rules Jupiter or sorry, uh, Sagittarius and Pisces. So just a couple other layers here are going to be our belief systems, our values, higher education, teaching, training, long distance travel, anything to do with international matters or international cultures, the legal system, the justice system, uh, dreams, spirituality, our intuition, endings, the unseen world. So Jupiter brings with this, I mean, the list goes on and on and on, but again, I wanted to kind of keep this short, sweet to the point. Um, but Jupiter is going to bring these forward in Gemini. Now to add another layer, and sorry if I'm confusing you, just bear with me, <laughs> bear with me. Now Jupiter is moving through a mutable energy and now Jupiter is moving through an air sign of Gemini. So what does that mean? So this is going to just bring in additional layers of expansion. Remember, Jupiter expands anything he touches. So education, I want to highlight here, is getting double whammy hit. I'm going to put it out there to the collective. If you have an opportunity to upgrade, to learn something new, to dive into something new, I would say take advantage of this time. You know, from May until next June is when you're going to be able to expand your mind quite literally. So and dive into topics and you'll be and your curiosity, all of our curiosity is going to be enhanced. So just keep that in mind. We're going to get double hit with education here, which is really, really cool. And also traveling. I think the world is going to start expanding also from a travel and transportation perspective um, overall as, as a collective. Because again, we're getting double hit here with uh, traveling, whether it's within our communities, immediate communities, but also expanding. Um, I just heard the higher mind. Yes, it is going to be expanding our higher mind, but also anything to do with long distance traveling and transportation that on a. I, they're sort of showing me the globe pulsating and expanding. So I really think all of us, I do think this is a good transit, but I'll get into some cautionary tips here in a second. Um, so again, learning, teaching, going back to school, or this could also be the energy of you becoming a coach, a teacher, an elder. Maybe it's your time, you know, to become, to step into that leadership um, role or authority type of role or for some of you this could quite literally be going back to school you know we're upgrading or training or taking on a new challenging um, career opportunity or something along those lines because again you're going to want to expand we are going to want to expand it's all about the mind now so we're going to really want to expand 
um, our intellect and our we're going to want to itch that curiosity bug that's going to be uh, nipping us in the bud over the next uh, year. I think technology is really going to expand too. I think this is going to be pretty incredible. Um, and then we talked about transportation. This is all kinds of transportation. It's it's also how you get around. Uh, so whether that's walking or biking or taking the train or the subway or the bus or if you drive to work or something along those lines. Also, I want to throw it out there. If you are looking to purchase a new vehicle, it's actually a pretty good sign to buy a new vehicle when um, Jupiter is moving through your third house, uh, whether it's your third house or Gemini. Um, I personally did this unconsciously 12 years ago. Uh, when Jupiter was transiting my third house and I still have that vehicle to this day and I bought it brand spanking new. I'm not saying you have to buy something brand new, but honestly, it's weird. It's the best vehicle I ever bought. I didn't spend a ton of money on it and it's still going th to this day and it looks like new, like, and it's, you know, 12 years old. So, um, I like sharing that story because again, 12 years ago, I, I wasn't, you know, I was on the cusp of dabbling in astrology but I had no idea so I did it unconsciously and I bought this new vehicle and it was the best decision I ever made but I do caution you here because Jupiter can make you want to blow a lot of money on technology and gadgets and learning and transportation and all these cool things but I mean we can also go overboard right because this energy uh all planets have light energy and uh dark energy let's call it so <laughs> the good the bad the ugly the beautiful comes with all of these planets so it's just a matter of how we use this energy but anyway i thought i'd share that personal story because i will never ever ever uh forget that 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 was just you know so cool when i think back to that um but also this could go for gadgets as well like you know if you're in the market to like upgrade your computer laptop cell phone um if you're a YouTuber, maybe get yourself all set up with some really cool, fancy equipment. Again, not a bad time to upgrade and expand from a tech or a technology perspective as well. But again, the hint is there to overdo it and overspend. So it's always a balance with these planets, with all of these transits. There's always a fine line, right? A, a fine balance. But, um, but again, with this energy, you could find some really lucky breaks and some good deals as well. Okay, so just a couple things to watch out for. Not a negative, I don't, I don't want to turn this into a negative thing, but just a few things to watch out for. Because Gemini is, this, this is the epitome of squirrel energy, okay? If you know what I mean, like squirrel, 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 you know, that type of, like distractions, okay? If you don't know what I mean by saying squirrel. <laughs> um, but yeah, distractions like crazy, okay? And, and this energy is very chaotic. It can get be very chaotic and scattered. So watch out for that. Um, this is the epitome of the jack of all trades. And there's nothing wrong with a jack of all trades, right? Like I grew up with a dad that you could throw anything at my dad and he could do it. He could build houses. He could do electrical work. He could do plumbing. He's a mad mechanic. Like he could do it all. Like I, I don't actually really know what my dad can't do because that's how I grew up with a dad that's like, a jack of all trades and he was very successful doing that <laughs> you know so i'm not saying this energy is bad i just want you to be mindful of it because depending on your personal birth chart some folks thrive in this energy right they thrive with not getting into the details and just like rolling with life and you know that epitome of jack of all trades but there's some of us that want to drill down deep. I'm looking at you, Scorpio. Uh, <laughs> drill down deep to the earth core and understand one topic to the epitome and be an expert in that topic or in that field. So I'm going to be honest, that's going to be challenging to overcome. I'm not saying it's not going to happen. I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm just giving you an idea and some examples of the flavor of this energy. Like Gemini just wants to talk about surface level stuff. I'm not saying Geminis are not deep or intense because again, all of our charts are unique to us. Unless you have literally 12 planets 
packed into Gemini, which is not possible, by the way. Um, but you know what I mean? Like it's it's just, or I hope you're sort of understanding where I'm getting at here. It's it's not um, a bad thing, but it will challenge all of us if we want to be specialists or specialize in one thing. It's just gonna take a little bit more effort. But if you want to dabble in a whole bunch of different topics and things, we'll be able to do that this year, hundred thousand percent. Like, absolutely. We're going to be able to, you know, you might want to get into woodworking and then suddenly, no, I want to uh, go into mechanics. No, I want to go into engineering. Uh, no, I want to be a psychologist. You know, like it's that type of energy where you're just scratching the surface and you're kind of like testing the water before you jump in into maybe say one topic. So just something to keep in mind. So yeah, watch out for also impatient. This can make all of us really impatient. <laughs> so it's kind of like, we're gonna be like, okay, get to the point. Um, this will definitely make all of us, uh, I think socializing period. You're, like I said, they're showing me the world expanding, not only from a technological perspective, but also this is the epitome social butterfly en uh, energy, which I think is really incredible. Um, I think we need this right now on the planet. I think we need to cre um, reconnect with our fellow humans, with our fellow people, with our communities, like get to know your neighbors, like get outside, walk down the street, start chatting with people that live down your street or, or your road or whatever. Get to know people in your immediate community. That alone is going to make you expand in this area of life. And that's what Jupiter here is going to help us do. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I talked about, yeah, inconsistencies and I, you know, I think I mentioned, yeah, it is going to be hard to focus on one thing over the next year. Like, you know, is it going to be impossible? No. Um, but you'll, you'll notice, uh, it'll be difficult to just focus on one thing over the, over the next year. Now, Jupiter does have to work extra hard in Gemini too. So, uh, think of it this way. So uh, across the street from Gemini is uh, Sagittarius. Now Jupiter rules Sagittarius. So now Jupiter is in its opposite home sign. So Jupiter's not really comfortable in Gemini because he wants to expand, you know, he wants to be grandiose. And Gemini is like, nah, I just, I just want to like talk about this one thing and then talk about this other thing. And then let's hit the road. Let's drive here. Let's go camping. And then let's take this art class. Like, and Jupiter's like, what, what are you talking about? Like, you know, like it, it's like Gemini is leaving Jupiter in the dust, you know? So <laughs> Jupiter has to work extra, extra, extra hard to be in this sign. Again, not a bad thing. It's just that he's, that means us as a collective and personally, we'll have to work a little bit harder to expand this area of our life. And I'll get into that in a second here. Now, if you have your natal Jupiter in Gemini, um, you are having your Jupiter return. So this is absolutely incredible. You are obviously uh, not only reached a milestone, but you're building on these milestones. So every 12 years, again, go back every 12 years to kind of see how your life has evolved over the past 12 years. Um, you can even go back six years, not to confuse you, but for those of you that um, understand your chart and know a little bit about astrology, even go back every six years. I noticed that as well. When I went back every six years in my chart, I'm like, oh, okay. There was actually an, a life event that did happen, you know, but again, it depends on how your chart is set up and if Jupiter is on an angle or a prominent placement in your chart, but um, yeah, think back, you know, go back in time and be like, you know, look what I, look how far you've come to this point. You know, whether you have Jupiter and Gemini or not, this is for all of us, you know, look how far, you know, Jupiter and Saturn do help us build. They are the social planets. So they are, um, I personally think some of the grandest planets that help us grow and evolve in this lifetime. Now, you don't need your chart to know if you're having a Jupiter return. I listed the ages here on the slide. So 24, 36, 48, 60, 72, 84, or 96 years young. So if you are around one of those ages, again, give or take, you know, six months to a year or so, 
because it's not an exact science, but it's approximately every 12 years. So if you're around one of these ages, more than likely, yeah, you e are either coming up to your Jupiter return or maybe you just had your Jupiter return. Um, so for those of you that had Jupiter and Taurus, you would have had your Jupiter return. So it's kind of like, okay, now you're setting the stage for the next 12 years where you, you're, you're starting a brand new 12 year cycle or think of it as a brand new six year cycle. Because again, that's what I kind of noticed. Jupiter also works in six year cycles as well. So just food for thought there. Um, let's see here. I think that is about it. So let's dive into all 12 signs. Hey Aries. Okay, so let's talk about where Jupiter is going to be expanding your world. Um, in at least one area of life over the next year. So again, if you watched my intro, think back to again, 2012, 2013 and 2000 and 2001 to kind of get a flavor of what Jupiter did for you while he was transiting uh, Gemini 12 years ago or 24 years ago for that matter. <laughs> um, and you can keep going backwards again, every 12 years, just subtract every 12 years to get an idea of what Jupiter is doing for you. So Aries for you, this is impacting your third house. So this is the house of the lower mind of learning of anything to do with day to day matters and routines. And this is also transportation. So if you listen to my intro, if you are in the market to buy a new vehicle or a used vehicle or a different vehicle or a new bike or, you know, whatever it is, however you get around, um, not a bad time to do it. Cause I personally did this and let me tell you, no regrets. I still have that vehicle 12 years later. Um, and it's been the best vehicle I've ever owned. So I'm just going to throw it out there. Just a personal example there. I'm not saying you have to, so don't worry about it. Um, but cause this can also go for like technology, anything to do with technology or communication. So like upgrading a computer, or if you're a YouTuber, get yourself all set up with some fancy equipment or a new TV or a new streaming device or, you know, things like that. Anything to do with technology or techie type of stuff. So Jupiter wants to expand this area of your life. So this also um, anything to do with upgrading Aries, upgrading, learning, teaching, traveling, whether it's short or long distance, because Jupiter also rules your 12th house and your ninth house. So um, traveling, I think is going to be really highlighted for you over the next year, because again, Jupiter wants to expand this for you. Um, so long distance traveling, local traveling, getting to know your neighbors, getting to know your, your community, where you are living, um, maybe could have a flavor of international matters as well. Publishing, writing, communicating, emails, text messages, things like that are definitely going to be increasing. Maybe you yourself, this could be you stepping into the role of the mentor or an elder or a teacher. So you're going to be talking a lot more or communicating a lot more. Um, or maybe you're pitching your business to international audiences, um, but also local audience as well. So I feel like, um, yeah, I feel like your throat chakra is going to be very active <laughs> over the next year, Aries. Um, this though, like Jupiter also rules your, your hidden 12th house too. So for you, Aries, you know, um, again, depending on what you're watching for, but if, if, if Pisces is your true 12th house, you know, Jupiter here is asking you to incorporate, uh, you know, maybe a new belief system, you know, your values, uh, spirituality a little bit. I, I mean, if Sagittarius is your true ninth house, this is the house of the gods. So this could have something to do with religion or religious practices or pil pilgrimages. Um, yeah, I mean, the sky's the limit. Jupiter definitely wants to expand not only your higher mind, but I mean, the focus here really is going to be on that lower mind and the mundane day to day stuff that we uh, just do on a on a day to day basis. Absolutely. Um, let's see here. Also, Aries, if you again, if you know your chart, if your IC is floating in the third house, OK, if it's floating in the third house, I'm just talking about if your IC is in the third house, I just want to be clear here. Um, you're looking at a possible expansion of the home 
as well. You might move, especially if Jupiter is making an aspect to your moon, there is more than likely going to be a change of home or a change of place of living. Or this could have something to do with um, mom, dad, authority figures in your life, bosses. This might even impact your career. Again, I'm just talking about if your IC goes right through Gemini, if your true IC goes through Gemini, that means your MC is going through Sagittarius. This is definitely, definitely going to impact your career and definitely impact your home life, probably in a good way. Like, again, this is Jupiter. But again, I don't have your chart in front of me, Aries. So forgive me. Um, but this definitely represents an expansion of the home family foundation. This could be uh, welcoming in, you know, a new family member into your home, like a new baby or adoption or a new furry pet. Um, or whatever the case may be. But again, this is definitely gonna impact your career. There could be changes in the career because the IC opposes the MC. So I don't wanna confuse you. We're still talking about the third house. I'm just talking to those folks that have a floating IC because there's a lot of us that the IC does not land in the fourth house. It usually lands in sometimes the second, the third, the fourth, or the fifth. Or if you have a really cockeyed chart, uh, like I have one of these because I was born in the north. Sometimes it can even land in the 12th and 6th houses as well. Uh, let's see here. But all in all, Aries, um, you know, wonderful transit, excellent transit for expansion on, like I mentioned, um, anything to do with educational pursuits is, is definitely going to benefit, uh, benefit you at this time. Um, I will, at, during the monthly reviews, I'm going to talk about, or the monthly head videos, I'm going to talk about when Jupiter squares up to Saturn and Neptune in your hidden 12th house. Um, but actually, when we come into this energy in May, Jupiter will be making a trine up to Pluto in your 11th house. So this means blessings coming in from friends, friendship circles, your hopes, your wishes, your dreams. Um, yeah, I just heard long term goals, but this could also be new benefits coming in from either current friendship circles or new friendship circles. But there's going to be some sort of transformational experience here with relating to your 11th house and your third house. So there's going to be some sort of sort of um, benefit coming to you in at least uh, one of these areas of life. And I will talk about that um probably closer to when this transit is happening, but that is definitely just kind of a, a sneak peek. Otherwise, Aries, that is about it. So enjoy your uh, Jupiter in Gemini transit, and I'll see you back here in the next video. Bye for now. Hey, Taurus, let's talk about where Jupiter is going to be expanding you for the next year. So lucky you, you had Jupiter in your uh, personal sign over the past year, and now he's moving into your financial axis here. Now, Jupiter actually rules one of your uh, financial houses. So he rules your eighth house and your 11th house. So Taurus, if you are looking to change jobs, change careers, um, buying, selling, material possessions, anything on the material realm. Um, Jupiter is going to be uh, expanding this area of life and blessing you in this area of life. Now, I do want to caution you, though, uh, with Jupiter in the second house, Jupiter can also make you <laughs> spend a lot of money, right? Because Jupiter expands. He wants to blow up everything he touches. Um, you know, again, the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful, right? So, I have no doubt, Taurus, you're going to be buying more things over the next uh, year. You'll want to increase your material possessions. Uh, but this is also good for buying and selling. Um, absolutely. But I feel like you, your income should increase with Jupiter here. Again, I don't have your chart in front of me, Taurus. So it depends on if it's making any aspects or conjunctions to anything else in your chart. But overall, just looking at this, you know, uh, from a day-to-day -day perspective, this should increase, this should line your pockets a little bit greater over the next year. So take advantage of this. If you are looking to increase your income, go after a new job, um, take on a new skill set. Again, this has the flavor of expanding educational pursuits, Taurus. So 
move forward with that. That's what I would recommend. Absolutely. Get curious, you know, um, expand the mind. That's also what Jupiter wants, you know, to do here for you and for all of us actually as a collective too. So let's see here. Um, another couple layers that could be layered in here are getting, um, there could be some benefits coming in from, or again, this could be layered in something to do with friendship groups or circles or your long-term hopes, your wishes, your dreams, uh, people that you hang around with. Now there might be, a, there's gonna be readjustments later on down the road here. I'm gonna talk about that in my monthlies because at some point Jupiter is gonna square up to Saturn. So we'll talk about that later on. Um, this might also impact your partner's resources, whether this is a business partner or um, a love relationship partner, somebody that you're living with or connected with from a financial perspective. So uh, this could be buying and selling of property, especially if your IC floats in the second house. If your IC is truly in your uh, in Gemini and Jupiter conjuncting your IC, definitely property matters. There, it could be buying, selling of real estate, moving. Uh, but again, that's only if your IC is truly in Gemini. However, in the eighth house, this is anything to do with shared resources. So you and your partner could expand on anything and this could be mortgages. Uh, but keep in mind, this is taxes, debts and loans. So Jupiter, again, here in this in this aspect in your financial houses, it's going to want to expand. So just keep that in mind. But again, this might have something to do with your partner. Um, I mean, this more so is focused on you, but I mean, this could impact your partner as well um, and his or her or they or them, their resources um, or their material possessions or again, anything shared that you have with this person could be impacted as well. But again, it's Jupiter, right? So Jupiter wants to expand. So you're gonna wanna buy more or get into more debt. So I do caution about that. You might make more money, but you might also wanna spend more money, Taurus. So, and I don't mean to sound like a negative Nancy. This is all in all, this should expand your pocketbook. This should expand your savings. But I always have to kind of throw in the, <laughs> the caution there, right? Because these planets, all of them have a fantastic positive side, but all of them can also be taken to the extreme as well. Now, um, when Jupiter first pops into Gemini, he's going to make a trine up to Pluto newly in your 10th house, Taurus. And this is incredible. This is incredible energy. This is definitely the energy of getting a new job, getting a promotion. Pluto is the wealthiest of the gods of the planets so combining here with jupiter in your second house lucky you i mean this could definitely be getting a really well high paying job um or again this could change your status right you could go from being a regular joe to and there's nothing wrong with being a regular joe by the way but this could push you into like fame or fortune or out in the public eye or becoming an executive or ceo in some way, shape or form. Um, so I'm going to take this as a blessing. It's definitely a transformational experience that's going to be coming into your life. Regardless, Taurus, over the next 20 years, you're going to have beyond incredible transformational experiences with Pluto transiting that 10th house. It's a very public house. So, um, you know, this could also maybe even be an inheritance coming your way, right? In some way, shape or form. But there's some sort of, could be a change of status here as well. That could definitely be a possibility as well. But other than that, Taurus, um, yeah, that's sort of it in a nutshell. I mean, I could go on and on and on, but again, keep in mind your personal birth chart and how Jupiter may be impacting the rest of your birth chart. Um, as well. Otherwise, enjoy your Jupiter transit and we'll see you back here in the next video. Bye for now. Hey, Gemini. Okay, you are the star of the show, Gemini. You are the stars of the show over the next year. So lucky you with Jupiter in your first house. So Gemini, think back, you know, 12 years ago, uh, 2012, 2013, 2000, 2001. 
what was happening in your life at those times when Jupiter was transiting your first house. So this can be so many things, Gemini. I'm only going to scratch the surface here because, you know, otherwise this video would be like 18 hours long. But <laughs> Jupiter in the first house is going to possibly touch all areas of your life. Why? Because this is one of the main houses in our charts. The first house, the seventh house, the tenth house, and the fourth house. Anytime Jupiter transits any one of those houses, usually is pretty life-changing. And this is the great benefic. So um, I'm not saying, you know, blessings are going to shower upon you. And I'm also not saying all these horrible things are going to happen to you. Okay. I have, I would have to see your chart to see if there's any, what's going on in your chart. What else is going on in your chart besides Jupiter transiting your sign? Is it making any conjunctions or angles to any other aspects in your chart? So I'm just going to focus on the mundane. Okay. Moving through the first house. Now, um, if you're a female watching this, um, and you're looking to start a family, Jupiter could quite literally expand you when it's transiting the first house. So um, do watch overeating, overindulging. We're going to want to do that when Jupiter is in the first house because we feel like a million billion dollars. We're just like, ah, I feel so good. So I'm going to eat and drink and be merry until the cows come home, you know. Um, so just be mindful of that. But this can also be pregnancy, right? I actually had someone comment on... Uh, I think it was my Jupiter and Taurus video. I can't remember, but she said, yeah, Jupiter literally expanded her. She got pregnant. And I mean, obviously I don't, I didn't know her chart. I didn't know anything, but I'll never forget that. You know, she's like, yeah, Jupiter expanded me. All right. I got pregnant. I'm like, oh my God, that's so cool. <laughs> I never thought of it that way. So anyway, I'm not saying everybody, all the Gemini's out there are going to get pregnant. Obviously not. And obviously I think there's other things that you know, have to happen in your chart for that to happen as well. But anyway, um, just something to keep in mind. But clearly, as you can see, you know, that could change your life. You know, even Jupiter in the uh, fourth house, that's an expansion of the home, you know, welcoming a baby into your home, you know. So uh, let's see here. Now, Jupiter also rules. Well, Jupiter, yeah, rules your seventh house of relationships and also your 10th house of career. Uh Gemini. So yeah, th I think this year also you will be asked to push yourself outside of your comfort zone. Um, later on down the road, I'm going to talk about when Jupiter squares up to Saturn in your 10th house. That's definitely some sort of readjustments when it comes to your status, your reputation, uh, your career, mom, dad, authority figures in your life. This could also be retirement. Um, if you're already retired, this is like, again, maybe shuffling, maybe suddenly you become a grandparent and you are now babysitting like pretty much full time or taking on new volunteer opportunities or something like that. So it, it will impact you if you are retired. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that right now. It, it will change your world in some way, shape or form, but um, this could also impact your relationships, Gemini. This can also make you sort of reassess where you're at with your relationships. Um, I'm not saying everybody's going to like break up. That's, that's not it. But if you feel like there should be a change coming in your life when it comes to relationships or maybe taking your relationship to the next level, like marriage, um, that could be a possibility as well. Absolutely. Because again, Jupiter rules your status house. Status is going from single to common law or common law to marriage, but it could also be marriage to divorced. You know, that could be a possibility as well. Now, if you're happily married, please don't take this as you're going to get divorced. Okay. You, you should feel this in your bones. This should resonate with you. If a relationship is not working, um, this could also uh, challenge you to um, change your living circumstances, home, family foundation, especially if you have anything in your uh, fourth house of Virgo, if that's your true fourth house, or if your IC, if your true IC and MC runs through Virgo and Pisces, then yes, this will be Jupiter is going to ask you to take a leap of faith to change your circumstances when it comes to your career or your home life, something to do with home family foundation, something's got to shift and change in that area of your life. 
Um, the, and again, this could impact business partnerships, business partnerships, friendships, uh, love relationships, you name it. Um, I hope you're kind of getting the idea that this could impact all areas of your life, Gemini. Now, this doesn't mean good things are not going to find you, okay? Uh, <laughs> you know, of course they will. If you have Venus in um, Gemini, for example, natally, well then, yeah, Jupiter coming together with Venus, that's incredible luck. That's incredible luck in love, in business, in um, love and romance and finances and money coming your way. Absolutely. Beauty, you know, changing the way you look. Um things like that, Gemini. So I'm not saying that, you know, your whole world is going to turn ups be turned upside down and nothing good will happen. Absolutely. Like absolutely good things will happen. If your son is in Gemini, this is an expansion of your career, 100%. Um, this could also be an expansion of um, something to do with technology, you know, communication, how you get around, transportation, uh, neighbors, siblings, cousins, you know, you could be expanding on that as well if it's if it's hitting your sun sign. Um, also, maybe something to do with father, father figures. Your dad gets good news. This could be dad or male figures in your life getting good news, maybe on a medical front or on a career front. Or, you know, maybe they're just finally able to retire or whatever the case may be. Or this could also be benefits coming in from a father or father figure or bosses or authority figures in our lives. So... As I mentioned, like the list could go on and on here, Gemini, but I'm just going to stick to the mundane of, you know, just be prepared for blessings to come in, in all shapes and sizes. Um, be mindful of the silver linings. Okay. If something happens or if something challenges you to, to move or shuffle or pivot, just know after this transit, once Jupiter pops into cancer, but even later on down the road, you'll see the blessing. The blessing usually always, always, always comes in disguise, um, especially when it comes to Jupiter, you know, because Jupiter, again, is representing the house of the gods, you know, the higher mind, the higher consciousness. So, and there's a lot of things that happen, right, day to day that we don't understand, but later on down the road, we do understand, right? Anyway, Gemini, I hope that helped. I wish you a wonderful Jupiter transit in your sign and we'll see you back here in the next video bye for now hey cancer let's talk about where jupiter is going to be expanding you over the next year now this is in your hidden 12th house cancer so this is like having a guardian angel a giant guardian angel on your shoulder quite literally for the whole year now all of us have our spiritual tribe behind us like all the time but this is like extra 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 spiritual support cancer i love this i love jupiter in the 12th house like things just kind of like fall into place and you have this protection around you and you feel safe and you feel guided and protected and honored and it's such a beautiful transit cancer you will probably gravitate uh, to religious or spiritual or metaphysical things or topics. Um, don't be surprised by this at all because Jupiter is helping you get in touch with that and expanding your consciousness, your higher consciousness and the lower mind too of accepting spirituality into your life. Um, this is definitely the transit of uh, signs and synchronicities, a thousand percent. You know, this is tapping into your intuition like crazy cancer. Like synchronicities are going to line up. You're going to be in the right place at the right time. You know, um, yeah, I'm, I'm getting, I'm feeling fuzzy. I'm getting the tingles. I'm getting tingles everywhere. I love it. I love this for you. I think this is going to be such an incredible transit. And also cancer, you are... You know, technically, this is wrapping up a 12-year cycle for when Jupiter pops into your sign, which is going to happen June of 2025. So I know we're a long ways off. But yes, Ju Jupiter is like preparing you for this cycle. Um, also, give yourself permission to like kick back, relax, 
pamper yourself, solitude. You're, you know, this this might increase your solitude, but I think you're gonna, you might like it, Cancer. <laughs> Uh, but this is the house of Gemini. So, I mean, this could also make you, I can also see this as um, asking you to push yourself outside of your comfort zone to be a bit of a social butterfly. Absolutely. Because this is Gemini after all. So this is, again, uh, if you watch the first part of my video, I talked about Jupiter expanding in Gemini, which is like our community, our neighbors, getting to know the people you live by, getting to know your immediate community. Um, not so much traveling all over the world. It could be, like it could be, because Jupiter does rule that, but this is more focused energy on your immediate environment. Who surrounds you at this time? You know, who are your neighbors? Who are your community members? Um, this could even put a focus or a spotlight on um, siblings as well, relatives as well, extended family members as well. Now, Jupiter rules your ninth house and your sixth house as well. So this might also have a flavor of uh, being in the right place at the right time, finding the right job, finding the right career, finding the right health practitioner, um, improving your health in some way, shape or form, getting those intuitive hits, intuitive nudges of improving your health or um, yeah, again, they're showing me you being in the right place at the right time when it comes to like so many different things in your life. And Jupiter rules your, um, your ninth house as well. So this could also be long distance travel, trips, traveling around, um, dealing with international matters or internet, people like just different from you, different cultures, um, experiencing different things. Again, this is the house of spirituality as well. Um, educational pursuits, if I didn't already say that, like expand the mind when it comes, like learn something new, Cancer, learn something new. Even if it's like, you know, you're in your career and um, while well, your career with the eclipses, you know, are probably up for some change, but say for those of you who are like, yeah, I'm retired or yeah, I'm in my career and I'm good. Expand the mind from a hobby perspective, maybe. Or again, dive into metaphysical stuff or tarot or I don't know, anything that lights you up. Going to church, finding a group of like-minded people when it comes to spirituality. What does spirituality mean to you, Cancer? That's going to expand for you over uh, over the next year. Uh, this could also be uh, some sort of, let's see here. Yeah, with Pluto newly in your eighth house, Jupiter is going to trine up to Pluto uh, in May. So this could, again, be blessings coming in from a financial perspective or blessings coming in from a partner, like anyone that you have shared resources with um, or buying, selling of property as well. I do caution you, though, to um, not get into crazy debt. Uh I'd have to see the rest of your chart to see that, but I mean, that did pop into my head, so I'm gonna say it. Be mindful of like loaning out money. Again, whether this is a business partner or a love partner. Um, yeah, or a new lover or something like that. Someone that you don't really know, but maybe you're dating or something like that. Be mindful of mixing money with these people. Now, if you have the means to just give out money and you don't care if you get it back or not, then yeah, go nuts, you know, but yeah, I am getting a cautionary poke about that. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to put that out there, cancer, but nothing to worry about. All in all, these benefits should be coming to you. And again, they keep showing me you're going to be in the right place at the right time. And again, this is just amping up your spiritual team that's going to be behind you over the next year. And please pay attention to the signs and synchronicities. Even if you're listening to this and you're like, I'm not into woo woo and I, I don't do this and I don't do that. I'd be kind of surprised by the way, cancer, because I'd be surprised. Why are you even watching this video? <laughs> if you're not into metaphysical or at least curious, you know, uh, get curious, by the way, get curious about the unseen world and the unseen realm uh, because it's there. It is there. It's like right there. It's like right in front of our faces. We just don't 
realize it because we're in this dense reality of 3D. So it is there, trust me, it is there. And if you start seeing number sequences, smells, feathers, coins, animals, bugs, insects, anything, start paying attention to those things. Because trust me, they, your spiritual team, your loved ones are trying to get your attention. A thousand percent, they're trying to get your attention. And this is, Jupiter in here is going to amplify that. So the more that you notice, the more signs and synchronicities and songs, I just heard that, and songs as well. Even if a song pops in your head, this happens to me all the time, where I'm like, why, why am I singing this? <sighs> Like, where did this come from? So look up the verbs or the words of the song, you know, things like that, Cancer. Just notice what you're noticing and then you'll see the blessings between the lines. Um, anyway, it's a very magical time for you. I love this for you, Cancer. So enjoy your Jupiter transit through Gemini and we'll see you back here in the next video. Bye for now. Hey, Leo, let's talk about where Jupiter is gonna be expanding you over the next year. So your 11th house of friends and friendship circles. This is also your hopes, your wishes, your dreams. And this is also the house of um, social media as well. I think there's going to be some Leos out there that are going to get some social media fame possibly, or definitely an expansion. Like if you have a website or a social media site or a YouTube channel or anything like that, I think Leo, you're going to be definitely expanding on this front and possibly even maybe getting some new contracts, agreements, negotiations, or partnerships coming into your life as well, because Jupiter is going to be trining Pluto when he pops into Gemini in May. So this is huge. This is like being connected to a powerhouse person. Um, that's going to help you succeed or help you in, um, I don't know, whether it's your financial situation or your career or maybe connecting you with traveling or something like that or new educational pursuits um, or becoming a coach or a trainer or a teacher or something like that, Leo. So this is really, really exciting. And and on top of it, um, Jupiter is pouring opportunities into your Leo placements, whatever you're watching for right now. So if you're watching for your Leo sun, again, this is opportunity when it comes to career or when it comes to opportunity or blessings or gifts coming in from father, father figures in your life or bosses or elders in your life as well. Uh, let's see here. What else? What else? So yeah, Jupiter rules your eighth house and fifth house. So Leo, there's so many possibilities here that could happen. Um, this could expand romance in your life, love coming in. I mean, Jupiter's not your relationship planet, but I mean, there could be a layer here of maybe finding love or romance in uh, friendship circles or memberships or groups or associations that you affiliate with Leo. That could be a possibility. Jupiter could expand your finances. However, you have Saturn in your financial house, though. I'll talk about that later on when Jupiter makes a square to Saturn in your eighth house. This is definitely some sort of readjustment or reality check that needs to take place from your 11th house to your eighth house of shared resources and finances, Leo. So I'll talk about that later on because um, I also want to talk about the other players in the sky at that time. But all in all, there might be readjustments that need to take place here. Um, so I do caution you on getting into too much debt uh, because yeah, Saturn will might send you a reality check later on down the road or loaning out money to a partner, love partner, romantic partner, business partner, a friend even. Um, I do caution that Leo. Now, if you have the financial means to do so, then give her, go, <laughs> go ahead, Leo. But if you don't, um, I'm just gonna send you a cautionary note here. Now, if you do, it is what it is, right? Um, there'll probably be a readjustment that has to take place 
once Jupiter squares up to uh, Saturn. I'll talk about that later on. But regardless, Jupiter is going to be trining Pluto. That's a huge power player coming into your life, whether this is in love, whether this is in business, whether this is a friendship or a, or a group association that you join. Leo, this is awesome. And I'm going to be honest, for some of you, I'm feeling like stardom, like like fame and fortune um, and destiny is is going to be finding some of you, not all of you, but some of you. I'm just I'm sort of like getting that that um, like spotlight feeling. So that's kind of what I'm I'm uh, picking up here now. If you're midheaven, Leo, this is where you need to know your chart. If your midheaven goes through Gemini, okay? So if your midheaven is in Gemini, that means your IC is floating down in Sagittarius. This is also going to expand your career in big ways, huge ways. Um, this is definitely a focus on the career. This is also going to impact your home life because it's opposing your IC, it's opposing your home life. So again, not to confuse you, I'm just talking to those who have their midheaven floating, okay? Our midheaven, depending on our birth chart, is not perfectly straight. It, um, it floats, okay? It usually floats, depending on the house system you use. So if you're a floater, Leo, I know I am, my midheaven goes right through my 11th house. So um, yeah, if this is truly your midheaven, woof, Jupiter is bringing you some blessings with your career. And yeah, this is a fame aspect. And on top of it, it's making opportunity aspects to your Leo placements. Now, if you got your moon in Leo, uh, this could be a move. This could be an opportunity to move. I'm not saying you have to move, but this could be an opportunity to move. Um, again, if you have your sun, definite career opportunities, definite expanding on the career front and bringing in those blessings. Or if you're an entrepreneur, um, again, expanding your client base, expanding your social media, expanding your, um, this could also change your status as well. Um, and then if it's your ascendant as well, it's your identity, right? It's how you identify in the world and how people see you, how the public sees you. Uh, so that could bring in opportunities as well. But the choice is gonna be yours, Leo. Like this isn't a trine, this is a sextile. So the choice will be yours to take these opportunities or not. And you can leave them. I'm not saying you have to take every single opportunity because as I explained in the beginning of the video, don't you get yourself into a thing where you're do, you got like 15 balls in the air and you're like, I don't know how to juggle. Like, I don't know how to do all these things at once. So you can also bite off more than you can chew, Leo, with this aspect. So just just food for thought here, Leo, food for thought. Um, let's see here. Yeah, otherwise that's about it, Leo. I mean, obviously I'll be talking about this month by month as we go through the months, but um, this is just kind of a high level overview. Think back to the previous, you know, the last 24 years, 12 years, uh, what happened in 2012, 2013, and 2000 and 2001. That'll also kind of give you an idea of um, possibly what could be coming down the pipe for you this year. But definitely expanding your friendship circles. If I didn't talk about that, I can't remember if I talked about that. But yeah, this is expanding your social circles 100%, meeting new people, meeting new like-minded individuals. Um and expanding your hopes, your wishes, your dreams, your goals, you know, your social media presence, things like that, Leo. So um, wonderful transit for you, absolutely. So enjoy your Jupiter transit, Gemini, and we'll see you back here in the next video. Bye for now. Hey, Virgo, let's talk about where Jupiter is gonna be expanding you over the last, or sorry, over the next year. <laughs> um, lucky you, Virgo. Lucky you, you are going to be getting expansion and blessings in your 10th house of career, status, reputation. This is also the house of um, parents. So this could be mom, dad, authority figures in your life. Also, Virgo, this could be retirement. This could be you saying, you know what, I'm, I'm done, I'm retiring, and I'm moving on to new adventures this is absolutely the transit for that as well now let's see here uh jupiter rules your seventh house and your fourth house so 
Virgo, if your true midheaven runs through Gemini and your true IC runs through Sagittarius, yes, this is definitely going to be a glow up with regards to your career. However, Jupiter is going to ask you to step outside your comfort zone. Like this is going to make you uncomfortable, Virgo, on purpose, because Jupiter wants to expand you. Jupiter wants you to get outside of the little box that you put yourself in or that society has put yourself in or that your parents put you in or that your boss put you in or that your partner put you in. You need to step outside of that in order to expand on multiple levels. This is impacting. So Jupiter hitting the first house, the fourth house, the seventh house, the 10th house. This is life changing, life altering. Is it going to be easy? No, it's not. But it's Jupiter. Okay, so it, 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 we're not talking about Saturn here, even though Saturn is in one of your heavy hitter houses, but that's, I made a Saturn video, so you can go check that out if you want. But any planet transiting these heavy hitter houses is life changing. It's Jupiter though. So Jupiter tries to do it gracefully. It just depends on other aspects of your chart. Um, there will be a readjustment later on down the road. I'll talk about it when Jupiter squares up to Saturn. This is definitely going to be a readjustment either when it comes to a partnership, whether it's in business, in love, or a friendship, a contract agreement, a negotiation, something to do with your career, something to do with um, home, family, foundation, retirement, or mom, dad, bosses, authority figures in your life, Virgo. So you... You see what I mean? Like there could be a lot of impact here for you, especially over the next year. Uh, let's see here. Um, and then, yeah, with Jupiter posing your IC, if your true IC is in Sagittarius, this could be a move. If your moon is in Virgo, this could absolutely be a move. Absolutely. I'm not saying for every single one of you because it depends on your chart, you know, and I don't have your chart in front of me, but you know, the moon can represent mom. Uh, the moon can represent home family, our safety security blanket, uh, where we feel safe. Um, this could also impact your health Virgo. Absolutely. Like, but again, it's Jupiter. So like, there's a reason that Jupiter is squeezing you and, and putting a little bit of pressure on you Virgo to change, to change your life for the better. So just, you know, think of it, in that sense but all in all this is a glow up and expansion in your career regardless this is promotions this is money coming your way this is resources coming your way this is being in the right place at the right time but again you're gonna have to step outside your comfort zone okay you know this transit might very well pass you by i doubt that if your mc is truly in uh, gemini but there could be external circumstances that change. Maybe maybe your work environment changes and you might not do anything different, but it impacts you in some way, shape or form, if, if that makes sense. Or maybe, yeah, your boss comes to you and says, you know what, we're amalgamating with this, this company. This company bought us out. Um, I wanna promote you into a manager or an executive position. And yeah, you'll have the power Virgo to say yes or no. You know, I would say reach for the stars with this transit, but I'll leave that up to you. Absolutely. Um, so there will be some risk involved. Like you're going to, you're going to be asked to take some sort of um, risk uh, there, Virgo. Otherwise, yeah, think back 12 years ago. If I didn't already say that. Yeah. Think back 12 years ago, uh, you know, 2012, 2013, what was happening in your life then? 2000, 2001, what was happening in your life then? And just keep going backwards 12 years. Now, for you, even go back every six years because this is hitting one of your key angles of your chart. So as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, you can even rewind six years and then another six years and another six years just to kind of maybe, maybe see a pattern. I don't want to confuse you. This is more advanced if you kind of know your chart and especially the angles of your chart. But um, keep in mind, like, it depends on your chart too. Like, I mean, Jupiter could be making aspects if you have anything in Libra or um, actually Jupiter coming into Gemini is going to make a beautiful trine to Pluto newly in your sixth house. So this is healing. 
like this is heal if you ever want to heal your body uh virgo if you ever have any health ailments this is healing at the ultimate level with jupiter coming together with with pluto this is finding the right practitioner or um this is finding the right job being in the in the right place at the right time finding the right job that's going to expand you moving up the ladder you know or for those of you that want to bust out into entrepreneurship you know the sky's the limit i would say when jupiter is transiting the top of your sky there um this could also be pets or animals if you work with animals this is huge in a good way uh very impactful this is a powerful transit with jupiter trying um pluto absolutely and then pluto's coming into that busy 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 uh sixth house of like anything to do with your day-to-day -day could you know jupiter's pouring blessings into that pluto um so yeah this is incredible also for you virgo but otherwise that's about it i will talk about the mundane day-to-day -day stuff in my monthly videos um but otherwise yeah this is incredible for you virgo take advantage of the career opportunities that are going to come your way or retire you know this absolutely could be retirement if you already are retired this is definitely taking on a new adventure um again expanding the mind uh just because we retire doesn't mean we roll over and and we're dead no <laughs> no i don't care if you're listening to this and you're in your 80s okay like your 70s or 80s or 90s like you can expand the mind it does not matter your age it does not matter you can make an impact on this world it does not matter your age people even if you're listening to this and you're like 20 something years old like now is the time to take advantage of jupiter at the top of your sky again this does not happen it only happens once every um 10 to 12 years when jupiter is cruising along the top of your chart take advantage of this absolutely absolutely it's going to be uncomfortable but trust me you're going to look back and you're going to be like damn i'm so glad i did that or i'm so glad i took on that challenge or i pushed myself outside of the comfort zone or whatever the case may be so anyway enjoy this uh, transit virgo and we'll see you back here in the next video bye for now hey libra let's talk about where jupiter is going to be expanding you over the next year now i'm getting crazy goosebumps for you right now crazy group and it's weird i'm feeling them at the back of my head um yeah like this is going to be so phenomenal for the librans and the aquarians out there um or even if you're watching for this i mean anything in any planet placements points that you have in libra or aquarius is just going to get a glow up from jupiter now libra this is expanding your ninth house this is the house of the gods this is the house of spirituality belief systems the justice system this is long distance traveling please libra do me a favor over the next year and travel somewhere long distance please 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 it's going to expand your mind and expand your soul in so many ways like so many ways like you have blessings and protection over the next year to travel internationally okay now i don't see the rest of your chart i don't know the rest of your chart um but just looking at the mundane astrology that i have in front of me using whole sign house system this is incredible this is absolutely incredible like i said i'm getting goosebumps all up here and the back of my head it's just incredible for you libra like so awesome and then jupiter is going to be trining pluto in newly in your fifth house in may and and june um i'll talk about that in those in those monthlies but like this is romance this is this could be international love this could be meeting someone abroad and you fall in love um this is uh could have something to do with children if you work with children this is like a glow up this is a transformational experience for you libra and jupiter is pouring this energy into pluto and vice versa pluto is pouring this transformational energy into uh jupiter in that ninth house so take advantage of this energy in may and june because it will pass it will pass us by and we're not going to get this energy again until jupiter transits your sign but that's not for another like 
um, four or five years. So yeah, I love this for you, Libra. Absolutely. Expanding on the intellect, expanding on the higher mind. This could be channeling if you're into channeling. Um, going back to school, higher education. This is you becoming the elder, the coach, the teacher, the mentor. But again, this could be just you going back to school, you changing your life. I can absolutely see that. Um, yeah, or something to do with kids. You know, there's a very transformational experience coming in possibly with children as well, whether they're yours or somebody else's, or if you're, again, a teacher, this could be you becoming the teacher and teaching students. It doesn't have to be kids, but, you know, you become the teacher and you're teaching. Um, this could also, Jupiter transiting this area of your chart might also bring in a flavor of um, your sixth house and also your third house. So yeah, double whammy here of education, of learning, of traveling. Please, Libra, yes, travel. Even if you can't travel internationally, maybe you're not able to, you don't have the resources, finances, that's fine. Um, you can, <laughs> they're showing me, yeah, take a trip in your mind. They're showing me that. They're like, you know, showing me you sitting in your living room or meditating or something like that and either doing virtual reality, you know, or um, like meditation, out of body experiences, you know, cause this is also gonna expand your spirituality and religious house as well. Um, so even if you don't believe in that kind of stuff, you might notice what you're noticing and notice the synchronicities and magic in the air and things like that. Um, so yeah, and, and this could have something to do with expansion of your community as well, your neighborhoods, getting to know your neighbors on a, on a new and different level. Um, if you're midheaven Libra, this is where you need to know your chart, but if you're midheaven actually sits in Gemini and your IC goes down through uh, Sagittarius, then yeah, this is a huge glow up with your career. Huge. Okay. This is huge blessings coming in. Plus on top of it, Jupiter is going to be trining your Libra planets, placements, points, right? Uh, plus Jupiter is helping support that south node in your sign as well, helping you let go so you can welcome in new opportunities when it comes to love or business partnerships or new contracts, agreements, negotiations, or even marriages. This is, um, I believe this is the house of second marriages, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, hey, that could be a possibility too, Libra, especially if Jupiter is making a beautiful aspect to your natal Mars, uh, cause that's your relationship planet. So, I mean, yeah, this could be marriage for you, Libra. Absolutely. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised those of you that are single, you're, you're finding international love here as well. Uh, especially again, if that Jupiter is making an aspect to your natal Mars. So this is where you need to know your chart. Um, and if you don't, that's okay. Uh, that's, you know, I don't mean to confuse you here, but, um, yeah, beautiful, absolutely beautiful energy coming in for all the Librans. Um, but yeah, if your MC IC is going through Gemini and Sag, yes, definitely expansion with the career expansion with the home life. Home life is going to change. Career is going to change for the better. Um, absolutely. Expansion of the home changes in the home. Um, yeah, Libra, this is just fantastic for you. I don't know how else to say it. Just fabulous. Look back 12 years ago, 2012, 2013, 2000, 2001, to give you an idea of um, what was happening in your life. But keep in mind, the planets were all different, right? Saturn was in a different sign. Neptune was in a different sign. Well, no, Neptune, I think, would have been at the beginning stages of Pisces. But, you know, even Pluto was in uh, Sagittarius from 2000 to 2001. So, I mean, all the planets were in different signs. That's my point. That's my point is, you know, if something not so good happened, say 2012, 2013 or 2000, 2001, does not mean something bad is gonna happen to you now, Libra. So just keep that in mind. Um, actually, if your moon is in Libra, yeah, this is a glow up definitely with the home life, home family foundation, absolutely. Um, you know, you could find the perfect home if, if you want to move or renovate or expand the home in some way, shape or form. Absolutely. Jupiter is going to help you with that by making that trine 
into your moon. This could also be benefits coming through from mom, uh, motherly or uh, female authority figures in your life as well. And this could also be good things happening to your mom as well. So, all right, Libra, enjoy your Jupiter through Gemini transit. And we'll see you back here in the next video. Bye for now. Hey, Scorpio, let's talk about where Jupiter is going to be expanding you or at least one area of life over the next year. So this is happening in a financial house for you, Scorpio. So lucky you. This is benefits coming in financially that that you um, it, it could actually be indirectly too, indirect. So like uh, making your 401k or RSPs work for you. Um, or some sort of savings or investments or work for you, Scorpio. That could be absolutely a, pos a possibility with Jupiter here. You could also, your, your partners, this rules your partner's income, whether this is in love or in business, their income is going to expand in some way, shape or form. So that's going to directly impact you. And I hope it's in a good way, Scorpio. I'm gonna, I'm an optimist here. So let's say in a good way. Um, I mean, it is Jupiter after all. It, we're not talking about Saturn here. It's it's Jupiter. So Jupiter expands anything he comes into contact with. So my only caution here, though, with Jupiter in the eighth house is, yeah, you could take on more debt, right? Th this expands. This is the house of taxes, debts, loans, mortgages as well. So um, if you are moving Scorpio, for, for example, or you and your partner are, uh, I don't know, going to buy a restaurant together or something like that. Just be mindful of the debt that you are taking on while Jupiter is here. Also, um, there might be, uh, I'm going to talk about this later on, but there might be a reality check here when Jupiter squares up to Saturn in your fifth house. So this could be spending too much money on um anything to do with hobbies anything to do with your kids or romantic partners so maybe you are like lavishing your partner with all these diamonds and gifts and fancy cars and things like that and the reality check will come later on um when jupiter makes a square to saturn so i'm not trying to be a debbie downer here i'm just trying to give you a, a more uh, holistic bigger picture than just Oh, Jupiter's going to expand your finances. And that's it. No. Because uh, <laughs> it also depends on how Jupiter is talking to the rest of your chart, if you do know your chart. Now, when Jupiter hops into Gemini, he's going to be making a trine down to Pluto newly in your fourth house. This is pretty incredible. Like, this could be... Um, this isn't for all of you, okay? This isn't for all of you. But I mean, this could, again, be blessings coming in, something to do with home family foundation. Maybe an inheritance is coming your way. Maybe a big tax refund is coming your way. Maybe, again, um, spousal support is coming your way. Or um, something to do with you benefiting financially um, or materially from your partner or spouse. This could be buying and selling a property things like that, Scorpio. Uh, but this is a flowing, harmonious angle down to your fourth house there. So uh, incredible energy could be coming down the pipe for you in May and June timeframe. Uh, let's see here. Jupiter rules your fifth house and your second house. So yeah, Jupiter is one of your money planets. Absolutely. So yeah, your resources can expand, your work could expand. You could, um, I keep getting the message though for you in particular, Scorpio, with investments. So obviously I'm not a financial advisor or a CPA or an accountant or anything like that, but maybe a good time to either reassess your investments, relook at your investments, or talk to a financial investor on maybe how to save. Like depending on your age, well, I guess it doesn't matter how old you are. I mean, it, it's never too late to start even putting away 25 bucks bi-weekly or something like that. Whatever you can afford. Because, yeah, make money in your sleep, Scorpio. That I'm, I'm really getting that for you. Is like trying to make money behind the scenes or something like that. This, this could also be a side hustle. Absolutely. You know, a side hustle that you're bringing into form. 
uh, with Saturn down in your fifth house, this is absolutely crystallizing a side hustle or a business that you're trying to get off the ground. That's a possibility as well. Um, let's see here. Um, yeah, your belief systems could also expand and change at this time. Um, yeah, something to do with kids, you know, children do rule your, uh, your Pisces house there. So Jupiter's the ruler of your kids as well. So there could be, um, again, more debts, more money going out or going towards your children, but I'll leave that up to you. Um, maybe you'll want to pour more money into, again, resources and hobbies and do watch gambling, you know, do, do watch gambling there, Scorpio. Um, yeah, for you, I keep hearing investments. It's really interesting. I keep hearing investments, investments, investments. Okay, we got it. Um, <laughs> property. This is also shared property, shared resources, which we talked about. So now, Scorpio, this is where you're going to need to know your, your chart. But if your midheaven floats in the eighth house in, or I should say in Gemini for you, if your midheaven is in Gemini and your IC is down in Sagittarius, this is definitely a glow up with the career sector. This is um, benefits coming to you from career opportunities or benefits coming to you from home, family, foundation, mother, father, authority figures in your life, bosses, things like that. It's also going to impact your home life um, in some way, shape or form, whether by moving or expanding or renovating on the home front. Especially if Jupiter is making an aspect to your moon, um, whether it's a trine or a sextile or a square, um, moving or something to do with mother or motherly figures could be coming in at this time as well. Could be benefits coming in from the mom, but that's got to be a trine or a trine or a sextile. That's not a square. <laughs> so if Jupiter is squaring your moon, no, uh, that's not benefits coming in from mom. That would definitely be changes on the home front for sure and maybe changes in mom's life as well so you see how all this can bleed together scorpio so i hope i didn't confuse you uh but i hope i gave you I, i'm trying to give you a more bigger vision than just you know jupiter sitting in the eighth house absolutely is blessings when it comes to financial matters that still holds true but again this could talk to many other planets placements points in your chart so um all in all, Scorpio, I think you're going to enjoy this uh, transit. So I will talk to you again in the next video. Bye for now. Hey, Sagittarius, let's talk about your ruler. This is your ruler, Sag, and he is transiting your opposite sign, your, your sign of, um, or sorry, the house of relationships. House of relationships here, Jupiter, um, Sag. Look at that. I'm mixing you up. I'm calling you Jupiter now. Um, so since this is your ruler, Sag, you'll notice that from year to year to year to year, um, these transits impact you greatly. I have no doubt about it uh, because this is your ruler. This is absolutely your ruler. And, and it depends on where Jupiter is natally in your chart as well. So if you do know your birth chart, Look at where your natal Jupiter is and how is this transit going to impact your natal Jupiter as well. So this is definitely a glow up and expansion when it comes to relationships, Sagittarius. Now, um, this is opposing your placements, okay? So whatever you're watching for right now, whether it's your ascendant, your moon, your sun, or any other planets, placements, points, Jupiter is going to be opposing them. So Jupiter is asking you to rebalance something in your life, depending on the planet, okay? Now, if your descendant, if your true descendant runs through uh, Gemini, and that means your ascendant would be in Sag, obviously. So this could definitely be benefits coming in through a new partnership or an existing partnership this could be or bring on a marriage absolutely but not for everybody um but this could be signing on the dotted line with the right business partner with the right boss with the right company um or finding new love you know sag like if you are in a current relationship that's not really working 
Jupiter can help you change that. Now, I'm not saying everybody's going to get a divorce, okay? So don't like, don't take this the wrong way. I'm talking to those people who feel it in their souls and their bodies that they're in a relationship that's not working. Now is the time to let that go. Jupiter is here to help you with that, to help you walk away from that. Um, especially if Jupiter is making an aspect to your natal Mercury, that is your relationship planet. So if Jupiter, for example, is squaring your natal Mercury, Sag, this is opening the door for you to change your partnership, to get out of that toxic relationship, whether that's with a company, whether that's with um, some sort of anything to do with work, even if you own a business, maybe it's time to cut somebody loose. Maybe it's time to move away from that toxic love relationship, that toxic marriage. Maybe it's time to move away, away from that toxic friendship. This could also be friendships, people that we've known for a long, long time. Maybe it's time to move away and get away from people like that or get away from friendship circles that no longer suit us. Um, so again, I'm talking to those people that resonate with that. If that doesn't resonate with you, then that's not, that's not the purpose of Jupiter moving through the seventh house. And I'd have to see your whole chart to see what's going on, Sag. But all in all, like this is blessings coming in through partners. Like, absolutely. Um, and this is your ruler. So this could bleed into career. This could bleed into your home life. This could bleed into, you know, this is your identity. This is who you identify as. Um, you could change your identity. You could change how you present yourself into your into the world. This could change your status. Again, going from single to common law, common law to married, married to divorce, things like that. Um, let's see here. And then, yeah, Jupiter rules your fourth house where Saturn and Neptune currently are. So this could be adjustments on the home front. Absolutely. This could be people living, uh, sorry, moving out of the home, coming into the home, uh, whoever li lives under your roof, things could probably, are probably going to change, Sag. If you're, um, like, for example, if Jupiter is squaring your moon or making an aspect to your natal moon, this could be quite literally a move. And I see there's going to be a readjustment that has to take place when Jupiter squares up to Saturn. I'll talk about that later on in the year when that happens, but there's definitely a readjustment that has to take place here when it comes to a partnership and your home family foundation life. And again, this could bleed into career. This could even be retirement, Sag. So, I mean, I mean, even if you already are retired, this is definitely adjustments coming through. Um, like what does retirement mean to you, especially if your IC runs through um pisces and your mc runs through virgo absolutely if you're retired and listening to this the, the, i'm not excluding you this means that there's definitely going to be some changes to your status and changes to uh what retirement means to you your place of living where do you want to live where do you want to be what do you want to do like just because we retire doesn't mean we roll over and die like that just starts it's like being reborn again when you retire when you're able to retire and you can give back you know and i'm not saying you haven't been doing that all, all along sag but you know what i mean like it's taking on a brand new life cycle basically so all in all blessings are coming in they might be more like blessings in disguise though sag i'm not gonna lie about that like because this is hitting one of the heavier houses in your chart plus on top of it you got saturn down in the fourth house um and this is your ruler so yes so just be open just be open to the possibilities and again if something is not working in your life sag i'm talking to you change your life you know if you're happy with your life and it's like you know everything's rosy cozy then awesome awesome <laughs> Jupiter here is just going to glow up your relationship that much better. And again, maybe take it to the next step, marriage. Yeah, that's a possibility. You're signing on the dotted line here, Sag, with something, whether this is a new home, a new career, a new contract agreement, negotiation, marriage license, could also be divorce. Divorce. I'm just going to put it out there. But 
all in all, this is still benefits coming in from a partner or from a long-term friendship. But I can also see there's a friendship that's got to go bye-bye or something like that, or there's some sort of group or affiliation or membership that you got to cut and sever. But anyway, that's another, that's another video. Um, let's see here. I think that's about it, Saj. Um, yeah, so this is a transit that, yes, you, you will be asked to push yourself outside of your comfort zone, change your life. No one's going to change it for you. You know, like maybe with the eclipses, possibly, but I mean, the eclipses aren't hitting a heavy angle for you unless you have your midheaven in Libra and your IC down in Aries, then yeah, your whole world is definitely going to be, continue to shift into, uh, well, this is 2024 and then 2025, they're going to shift into, into new territory. So uh, again, it depends on your personal chart. But anyway, Sagittarius, I hope that kind of gave you an idea of the possibilities that could be coming in for you over the next year with Jupiter transiting Gemini. All in all, enjoy this transit. I, I wish you all the best, Sag, and we'll see you back here in the next video. Bye for now. Hey, Capricorn, let's talk about where Jupiter is going to be expanding you over the next year and I think you're gonna like this Capricorn um, for those of you that are workaholics <laughs> you know that is the epitome of Capricorn unfortunately sometimes not always but you know um, this is gonna expand your work cap if you ever want to change your work which you do on a day-to-day -day level now is the time to do it you know, Jupiter is going to bring in those blessings when it comes to work or finding being in the right place at the right time when it comes to work. Now, if you own a business, um, this could also be a glow up, a blow up when it comes to your business, getting more clients, getting more busy, getting more business, I should say. Um, the sixth house is very busy, Capricorn. So, I mean, this is going to just expand on your day to day duty and responsibility do watch out Capricorns for taking on too much. I can absolutely see this with you. And you are already the sign that everybody dumps their shit on and you're always stuck doing everything because you are the friggin' brick, solid brick of the family or the company or the friend or whatever. So please be mindful of this Capricorn. Okay. I'm a cap rising. So yeah. <laughs> I can see this happening a thousand percent over the next year, but is this going to apply to each and every one of you? No, because again, it depends on your personal birth chart, but I'm just warning you cap this, this will give you the energy of you're going to want to take on everything. You already are taking on the world. This is going to make you take on the world to like tenfold to a galactic level. <laughs> so, I mean, if you want to do that cap giver, but do watch out for burnout. Do watch out for burnout. Um, there might be a reality check coming later on down the road. I'll talk about it when Jupiter squares up to Saturn. Um, this might be a bit of a reality check when Saturn comes along. Our ruler, you know, Capricorn is ruled by Saturn saying, hey, no, 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 no. You're taking on too much shit. You're putting your health at risk. So like, let's cut back a little bit here and maybe somebody else can take on those tasks. So just kind of, I'm just giving you a sneak preview here, Capricorn. I'll talk about it later on down the road, but I, I do see it coming in here. Now, a really cool blessing that's coming in in uh, May and June is when Jupiter newly pops into Gemini and he's making a trine to Pluto that's newly in your second house. This is a very wealthy opportunity for Capricorns to go from rags to riches, okay? I'm not saying this one transit, it's like the skies are gonna open up and we're, we're all gonna become billionaires. I mean, if that happens, that's gonna be <laughs> pretty effing cool, but this is just blessings coming in. Again, something to do with work, an angle of work, increasing your wealth, your resources, material possessions, um, communication, technology, transportation, buying, selling, 
again, I'm hearing being in the right place at the right time because Jupiter rules your 12th house, your hidden 12th house cap. So yeah, this, this could be a lot of different things, but all in all, I feel like this is going to be transformational. This is going to be a blessing. I'm hopeful this is going to be a blessing. Again, this depends on your chart, Capricorn. I don't have it in front of me, so I don't know if Pluto is making any squares or if Pluto is conjunct anything or if Jupiter is making any aspects or anything like that. Okay, I'm just looking at the mundane right in front of me astrology. Um, let's see here. This is also really good news for your health. Like Jupiter in the sixth house, transiting the sixth house, this could be, uh, if, you've, if you've had any health concerns, Capricorn, this could be finding the right practitioner, again, being in the right place at the right time, being connected with the right people, not only from a work perspective, but from a health perspective as well. If you work in the health field, Capricorn, this is incredible. Um, if you own a business, this is incredible. If you are looking to hire people, to work for you, not only work for you, but even if you're looking for like somebody to like clean your house, cut your lawn, and a new do like a contractor, this is the time to hire them. You will find the right people. Um, they might be a little bit expensive. I'm gonna just throw it out there. They they might cost you a little bit more money, but you're gonna find the right talent to work for you, or the right contractor, or or whatever the case may be. Um, Let's see here. Yeah, this could also expand for those of you that are like writers, like journalists or journalism or uh, book publishing or anything like that. That could be a possibility for those of you Capricorns writing a book or anything like that. Yeah, with Saturn down there in your third house. Yeah, I, I would say that's definite a definite, definite, definite possibility. But Jupiter rules your third house of Pisces there. Um, so like I see a lot of Capricorns, uh, like downloading, you could be like downloading, um, insights or, uh, technology, something to do with technology to creating new things, um, getting them down on paper and either selling them or publishing them in some way, shape or form newsletters, websites, emails, communication, technology, transportation, um, yeah, and learning, you know, either you becoming the student again, Capricorn, or you becoming the elder and teaching this out. Uh, maybe you're a spiritual teacher and you're now expanding in this area of life. Again, I see a lot of Capricorns here. Entrepreneurship is going to be like bang on. Absolutely. Change of career is going to be bang on. Um, you know, plus the eclipses are supporting you with this as well. And then again, Pluto in your second house, like this is you expanding your wealth. Uh, this is you transforming your values, uh, your worth, your self-worth, like you're worth a hell of a lot more than what you realize, Capricorn. Now, some of you I uh, probably know this, but some of you don't, you know, and that's just the beginning of this Pluto in this second house. That's going to transform what material wealth and transformation and resources is going to mean for you. Um, and, and this is just a breadcrumb with Jupiter coming together with Pluto. Um, you know, and we'll get this again. We'll get this energy again once Jupiter moves into Libra. But obviously that's, you know, four or five years out yet. But um, yeah, all in all, Capricorn, I think that, again, wherever Jupiter goes, it is a blessing. But keep in mind, he expands, right? So Jupiter is going to expand your busy, busy, busy day-to-day -day house. Your health should improve. If there's any health ailments, it should improve at this time. Um, and yes, please watch out for burning the candle at both ends. I can see that definitely with Capricorns, 100% with Capricorns. So just be mindful of that. Balance is definitely going to be key, Capricorn. Um, and we'll talk about that square to your ruler later on in, in the year. So anyway, Capricorn, enjoy your Jupiter transit Gemini, and we'll see you back here in the next video. Bye for now. Hey, Aquarius, let's talk about where Jupiter is going to be expanding at least one area of life for you. And lucky you, Aquarius, lucky you, you and Libra are the lucky ducks of the Zodiac over the next year. 
Um, because first of all, Jupiter is going to be trining your planets, points, placements, energies, whatever you're watching for right now. And then if you have anything in Libra, um, in your natal chart, this is going to glow up and blow up those planets as well. So in a good way, in a good way, because this is a great big air trine happening in your chart, Aquarius. So this is so awesome. I'm so happy for you and Libra. You both deserve this. You deserve this. Pluto newly in your sign. Um, this is just so exciting. So Aquarius, first of all, if you are single, if you're a single Aquarian, um, this could definitely be meeting someone new. This is going to expand your romance, your romantic. You could actually date multiple people, you know, um, if that's your jam, absolutely. You could be dating multiple people at, over the next year. <laughs> so, cause this is the house of romance and dating and sex and sexual partners and things like that. So have fun Aquarius. If, if you are single, um, if you are looking to start a family, this is also the house of children, Aquarius. So um, whether you're male, female, they, them, uh, you could, again, this could be a pregnancy, this could be an adoption. Um, I mean, this could even be, especially if you have your IC in your Gemini house, your true IC, this is, you know, you could be bringing in um, pets into your house as well uh expanding your home in some way shape or form but aquarius this is also the house of um hobbies and creativity and self-expression so you're going to be expanding in this area of life and with it being the flavor of gemini as i mentioned at the beginning of the video you know this is like learning anything to do with learning and education and possibly social media and transportation and how you get around and traveling and getting to know your immediate environment your immediate community and like i said if your true ic happens to be in gemini this could be a move this could be a move especially if it's making an aspect to your um natal moon in aquarius if your moon is in aquarius or if your moon is up in Libra, but even if your moon is like in, let's see here, um, Virgo, for example, that's still, or sorry, not Virgo, um, Leo, for example, that's an opportunity to move, you know? So uh, possibilities, as you can see, Aquarius are endless. If I had your chart in front of me, I could be able to kind of see what's, what's sort of going on with the rest of your chart. But, um, yeah, definitely expansion in this area of life, Aquarius. And this is such a fun house. You know, this is also the house of entertainment and gambling. So just be mindful not to go overboard. There might be, I'm going to warn you, I'm warning all the signs right now. There, there's going to be a reality check possibly later on down the road once Jupiter squares up to Saturn. And Saturn's in your second house of income, Aquarius. So this is spending too much money on entertainment, gambling, romantic gestures lavishing your new romantic partner with all these shiny things or spending too much money on your kids if you have kids um later on down the road you know saturn's gonna come along and be like whoa tighten up that belt aquarius because you are blowing beyond your means you can't afford this shit. what are you doing or why are you showering this partner with a Maserati, like, did you really have to buy him or her that car? <laughs> Something, you know, that's a pretty extreme example. Do, but do you know what I mean? I'm just, I'm just forewarning you, Aquarius, you do you, we have free will, do whatever you want to do. If you have the means to blow money, like it's nobody's business, then awesome. Then you don't need to li listen to what I just said there. Um, but yeah, you're going to definitely want to expand and you're going to feel really good. And you're going to, you're going to want to shower your loved ones with blessings and gifts and and because you're going to feel on top of the world jupiter is going to be trining your sun or your ascendant or your moon or whatever you're watching for like you're gonna feel like a billion dollars you know um if your sun is in aquarius this is a glow up with career this is benefits coming in from a father or an inheritance or this is um maybe benefits coming in to your father or benefits coming from your father or if your moon is there, again, this is support benefits coming in from your mother or could be um, good things happening to your mom, good things happening to your parents, you know, good things happening on the home front, expansion on the home front. Again, maybe you're welcoming in a baby. Maybe you're getting pregnant. Maybe 
Huh, for those of you that want to start a family, try, like start now. <laughs> start now, Aquarius, if you want to get pregnant. Um, if you want to start a family, yes, please. You have a year to take advantage of this energy. So please, please, please do so. Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, I think that's about it, Aquarius. Uh, I mean, I'll be here to talk about it each month as we go, as Jupiter makes certain aspects to, like I said, planets, points, placements. Um, Jupiter popping into Gemini. This is making a, a um, trine to Pluto, newly in your first house of identity of the I am this is how you present yourself into the world especially if this is your ascendant sign if your ascendant runs through here so Jupiter this is just the first breadcrumb of what Pluto can do for you and the transformation that could be coming down the pipe for you Aquarius but this is just a little tiny sliver you you got a long ways to go absolutely Pluto's in here for 20 years so um, there's going to be lots of different aspects to this Pluto placement and lots of new beginnings. This is just enhancing the newness of everything that you've been going through um, over the last year with Pluto dancing between Capricorn and Aquarius. Uh, so this is exciting stuff. This is expansion. Like I said, you actually could attract in a really powerful um, career reputation status for those of you that want to retire you know absolutely this is the taking those next steps what do you want to do what do you want to do life doesn't stop when you retire right like what do you want to do the next 20 years of your life how are you going to change the planet how are you going to change the world uh how are you going to change your community how are you going to you know whatever you want to do i feel like the sky's the limit aquarius if, if you're retired or thinking of retiring like um especially if your IC runs through Gemini here. Yeah, that's, you know, that's retirement, place of retirement, uh, traveling, you know, take advantage of traveling if you can, Aquarius, uh, whether it's long distance or, or short distance or getting to know your immediate community, absolutely. So as you can see, there's so many different layers here that could really impact your life. You know, this could even change friendship circles, um, groups, people that you hang around with. Some people might go, new people might come in. Again, depends on depends on your chart, but Jupiter does rule that 11, your 11th house as well. Uh, and then again, Jupiter is your money planet. If, if the second house, if Pisces is your true second house, this is your income planet. So this is gaining an income through a hobby through something that you love to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Turn that into a business, Aquarius. Like, with Pluto in your first house, like, the sky is the limit. All bets are off. You are, you transform your experience. It's it's you. I mean, you're going to be attracting transformational experiences to you, but grab the bull by the horns, Aquarius, which I have no doubt you're already doing, being a fixed air sign. Like, yeah, you, you are going to have the power to transform your life and take advantage of this Jupiter trining your energies over the next year. Take advantage of it. If there is a side hustle that you want off the ground, now is the time to start or, or launch it. If you can, if you're ready to go, launch it in May and June when Jupiter is trining Pluto. That's going to be a huge glow up, huge from a financial perspective as well. Um, but yeah, I could go on and on and on here, Aquarius, but, but anyway, all in all, I, uh, I hope you enjoy your, um, Jupiter transit Gemini and we'll see you back here in the next video. Bye for now. Hey Pisces, let's talk about where Jupiter is going to be expanding you over the next year. So downstairs in your fourth house of home family foundation this is also the access of mom dad authority figures in your life pisces um yeah this is a big glow up to your home like expansion of the home whether this is renovating whether this is literally moving especially if your ic runs through gemini like 
if this isn't moving, this is like renovating or expanding the home or welcoming in. There could be people leaving the nest or coming into the nest or a new baby coming into the nest or a new furry friend or reptilian friend, you know, whatever you're into or spiders or whatever. But new pets, new pets coming into your life. Um, yeah, this is just expanding in general. Whoever lives under your roof, there could be definite changes coming in at this time over over the next year for sure. Now, um, let's see here, Pisces. Uh, this is your ruler. What am I thinking of? This is your ruler. Jupiter is your ruler. I know you're also ru ruled by uh, Neptune, but that's more of a modern planet. Jupiter is your ancient ruler. So those are the ones I usually like to look at. So wherever Jupiter goes, you probably notice year to year, regardless of your chart, um, there's shifts and changes year to year because Jupiter is your planet. So it's constantly changing that energy, right? So Pisces, for you, this is going to be a year where Jupiter, your ruler, is going to ask you to step outside your comfort zone, to get uncomfortable, be comfortable with the uncomfortable if that makes sense why because jupiter is technically squaring up to your pisces placements whatever you're watching for right now now trust me jupiter squares are a hell of a lot different than pluto squares or saturn squares or neptune squares for that matter or uranus squares for that matter okay so yes it's a square but it's definitely a blessing it's more of a gentle nudge um, or if you just stay put, this could be just changes in your external circumstances, right? Especially if this is hitting an angle for you, Pisces. So these are one of the key areas of your life. So if anything that transits the first house, you're experiencing this now, right? With Saturn in the first house, Neptune in the first house. But, um, now you got Jupiter in a key area of life. It's no different than if something is transiting your seventh house and your 10th house, those are big key areas of life. So those are huge. Those are very impactful. Same with the eclipses, very impactful. If they're hitting those key areas of life, your whole world could change. Absolutely. So, um, and there will be a readjustment that needs to take place here because I'll talk about it later on when Jupiter squares up to Saturn at some point over the next year and I'll and I'll talk about that later on but there's a readjustment here like a reality check moment here um like maybe if you're expanding too hard too fast on the home front and you're letting I don't know 10 people in your house renting off you or whatever that might bring some challenges later on down the road that's just an example okay um so I'll talk about that later on I don't want to scare you I just want to put it out there this could also mean like jupiter also rules your 10th house of career especially if your midheaven runs through sagittarius be mindful of taking on too much work uh over the next year be mindful of taking on too much work when it comes to home duty and responsibility um this could also have something to do with mom dad authority figures in your life because yeah jupiter is great jupiter is a blessing okay but jupiter expands anything he touches right so jupiter also makes us feel good and want us to take on the world but sometimes that's that gets us in hot water right pisces so you catch my drift if you're the only one at home say for example flipping the bills paying for everything maybe you're doing renovations and you're doing them by yourself and nobody's well maybe ask for help I don't know maybe no one's helping you ask for help ask for some guidance don't be afraid to hire help for example or guess what don't be afraid whoever's living with you or living off of you don't be afraid to, to be like hey can you pitch in here can you help me here I mean, Pisces, don't be afraid to say those type of things. Like Saturn in your sign is giving you that concrete foundation, that concrete backbone to stand up for yourself. Like this is the I am house. This is like, you know what? I'm not going to take any more shit. Like, like if you're not going to help me, there's the door. 
you know, and I know I'm, make, I'm making it sound easy and I don't also don't mean to sound harsh, but that's the, that could be some of the reality checks you might be dealing with over the next year, Pisces. So just be mindful of this. Um, for those of you looking to move, uh, this is incredible. Jupiter in the fourth house, um, absolutely, absolutely incredible. Um, I know I moved when Jupiter went into my fourth house and I obviously bought um, a bigger place. I got some property and land and stuff like that, but it's a lot to take care of, you know? It's a lot to take care of, but it was a blessing. It was such a blessing and, and the house just fell in my lap. Otherwise, there's no way I could have got into this market. There's no way. Um, but for those of you looking for a, a new apartment or a condo or a home or to just to move in general, this is a blessing for you, Pisces, trust me. But I mean, you know moving, right? It's not fun. It's like a bit crunchy and it's like, oh my God, I got to do this and I got to do all this paperwork and I got to pack and I got to do this. So yes, th there's work involved here, Pisces. Like Jupiter is going to make you work Saturn's making your work. I get it, Pisces, but if you've been following me for a while, I've been saying this for a while about you, you're going to be a superhero once Saturn moves out of your sign and then Jupiter here moving out of Gemini into Cancer, which is going to trine your energy. You're going to be a rock star, Pisces. You're going to be a rock star, but yes, the rewards will come. Trust me, the rewards will come if you work with these planets they're here to help you so again if those of you looking to you know buy or sell property it's full on with jupiter here absolutely jupiter is going to help you and if you are selling property you could actually get a lot more money than you than you anticipated um also for those of you uh this could be again like bringing in more people into your house like pregnancies babies expanding the family things like that um let's see here and, and yeah this could be changes in the career 100 percent. this could be work from home opportunities this could be um let's see here um something to do with mom dad authority figures in your life benefits coming in through mom or dad or bosses or um, people close to you, absolutely, that there could be benefits coming through those arenas of life. Um, and I mean, Jupiter is a ruler. So at the end of the day, this could impact all areas of life, in including your um, partnerships. So for example, if Jupiter, if you're single, Jupiter making a trine to your natal Mercury, for example, uh, this could be a relationship coming in, 100%. Um, yeah, this could be a new friendship, new partnership, new contract, agreement, negotiation. Um, absolutely. Like this could impact, like I mentioned, all areas of your life, Pisces. So let's see here. Otherwise, yeah, I'll, t I'll be here to talk about other Jupiter aspects as we go along here, but otherwise, yeah, enjoy your Jupiter transit Pisces and yeah, step outside your comfort zone this year. Like, and that's where you're going to find blessings when you step outside of that comfort zone, when you push yourself a little bit, when you get uncomfortable, that's when you're going to find the blessings and you're going to find you're going to be in the right place at the right time. So enjoy this transit Pisces and I'll see you back here in the next video. Bye for now.